What's up, Z Brushers? Welcome back to Z Fever. My name is Ricky, and today we're going to be talking about uh, custom interfaces and uh, you know just general Z Brush literacy. Um, <clears throat> so I've never actually gone through and created a UI specific uh, tutorial, and it's mainly because uh, so many other tutorials are out there and they they go through this this whole process but um you know i started seeing some things through forums and uh even even on some of my own videos of you know people complaining about the the user interface and talking about how it's clunky or you know it's it's not well suited for for this that or the other and uh you know i look at these things and and uh you know th that's just for lack of better words, it's simply lack of education on the user's part, okay? So and it may not necessarily be your fault because there there are lots of avenues that you can go through to use this program. So we're going to break this down and go through the uh, just the general UI, and I'm going to show you how to navigate through it and how to make it work for you, okay? So um, the way I like to explain the UI is I like to go you know in a clockwise sort of fashion. I like to start up at the top, um, or actually, let's start in the middle. So this is our document, uh, the, the large open area where the majority of our work gets done, at least uh, whenever it comes to sculpting, right? Now, um, around the interface, going uh, from top and all the way around, you have uh, all your palettes are listed up here, right? And they're in alphabetical order. They start with uh, alpha, brush, color, and go all the way to your Z scripts, right? Now, these are all functions that you can use to uh, serve whatever purpose it is that you need to uh, accomplish, right? Um, off on the left and the right side of the, and, and on the bottom, you'll see that there are these little triangles, right? And if you click on them, uh, you'll see that the UI changes a bit, and these are called trays, right? And so what do we do with trays? We store things in them. Um, and so how can you store stuff into a tray? Well, if you grab a palette and you hover over it, uh, there will be this little button here. And if you just click on it and drag, uh, you can add it to a specific uh, tray, right? And so likewise, you can also remove it from the tray. All you got to do is, is grab it and drag it out of there and it's gone, right? So that's how to set up your trays, you know, from the outset. Um, and if you're, if you're just looking at this uh, starting out, you know, they kind of got it set up. You know, you have your basic functions with your, with your uh, MRGB, um, your, your color data, sculpting data, things that affect your, your brushes. Um, you know, and the, this is just uh, minor stuff, right? There's more in-depth stuff here inside of the brush palette, right? Then you have your, uh, your navigational stuff where you can control, you know, how how much of the document is seen. Um, you can control whether or not it's the actual size. Um, you can tell it that you want it half size, actual size. You can control perspective. Um, you can turn the floor on and off through here. Um, you can put on local symmetry, which is good if you have symmetry on an object, but it's kind of like away from the center of the world. And that's a, that's a good thing to do. Now, um, so this is all great and wonderful, but many people may not realize that this is simply a custom interface. Um, ZBrush or PixelLogic has gone through and they've made it possible for people to be able to go through and, and create their own custom interfaces. And the reason why is because they want it to be artist friendly. But the problem is, is that everybody has a different way of working and it's completely impossible for them to guess how you prefer to work. I mean, they could they could throw out a survey or something, and they could narrow it down. But there's always going to be somebody that's not happy with it, right? Um, and <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, I say that jokingly, but it's true. And and the thing is, that I, I see a lot of artists these days, and they sound like a bunch of angry gamers, man. And it's like, you know, what what are you doing this for? You just learn the program, learn how to do things, and you know, be happy or go find something else to complain about. So what I've done is I've I've uh, docked this this preferences palette over here. And uh, what we're going to be focusing on is this uh, config portion of the preferences palette. Now, if I open this up, you'll see that uh, I have the ability to restore a standard UI. So if you create a custom U UI or if you're using somebody else's custom UI and you want to get back to 
the the main uh, menu, the main user interface. All you got to do is restore standard UI, and uh, it'll it'll go right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a, a UI, and this is uh, this is Matt Thorpe's user interface. And uh, if you watched any of my other videos, uh, mine's not too dissimilar. It's pretty much because I kind of stole most of it from him, changed some colors. But it, the reason I use it is because it works for me. It's uh, it, it just makes sense. And uh, you know, he has his setup for his purposes, and for me, it just it just works. Now, the great thing about using a custom user interface is that you can customize it any way that you want to. So if you're working on, say, a Cintiq. Um, and you're left-handed, right? And you don't want to be moving over your document to be able to be grabbing menus. Then it might be good for you to put all of your all of your buttons and everything on the left side of the screen. You know that way that way you're not taking your eye off of the uh, the piece of artwork that you're working on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna go back up here, go over to config because you see whenever I loaded up that UI. It got rid of that preferences palette because it's it, it loaded up a custom UI. So I'm going to restore the standard UI, and then I'm going to uh, redock this over, or not. There we go. Okay, so um, when you're going through and you're trying to learn ZBrush, you could actually learn this entire program just by hovering over stuff and holding control, and it'll tell you how to do things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this Enable Customize, and uh, it tells you right away, uh, uh, turn Enable Customize on to allow you to customize your user interface by Control-Alt-Dragging Controls. Um, so whenever the UI customization is enabled, you can create new menus and drag controls into them. So you can create menus, uh, you can create all sorts of stuff. So we're going to turn this on. And what's going to happen is now I can go through and I can start, uh, you know, managing things. So if I want to change the location of this, this uh, Z add button, so I'll go Control Alt and just drag this up, right? And it's just moving, it's just moving things around, right? And so I can, I can completely change things. So I can, if I want this BPR gone, I'll just drag it off, right? Same thing with this. I can, I can go as skinny or as fat as I want to on this, right? Um, so let's say I don't use half of these buttons. I don't use that. I don't use that. I use hotkeys. Um, definitely not that. Um, might want to change the location of that. Maybe I don't want all this stuff all over the place, right? Um, then I can definitely do that. So let's do this. I'm just going to get rid of everything on this side. There we go. There we go. All right. So I've gone through. I've done that. Um, let's say... Let's say I want to change some other things, you know, um, you know, I can create a new menu. I can change colors, right? Um, let's say, let's say I want my, say I want my buttons to be like a red or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my uh, color picker and let's see. So I can uh, choose that as my color. I can choose red as that. And, and this is just changing the text, so I can change the text color, right? And this is going to be based on whatever it is that's in my UI. So if I want yellow on red, you know, uh, then I can hit that, and it'll change all these all these letters and everything. So you can customize every single thing that's in here, okay? So I'm not going to tell you, you know, what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just showing you what you can um, possibly do right, and so whenever I've I've done this, I can say, okay, I'm done. I'm done customizing. I'm just gonna turn off enable customize. Turn it off, okay. And uh, now what's happened is this entire thing has set, and it's gonna um it's gonna remain, right. Now if I want to save this, I'll just hit this uh you I'll hit uh, save UI, or I can hit uh or no store config. And I either hit store config or press the hotkeys control shift I and what that'll do is it will it will uh, store this as a custom interface and you can name it whatever you want to okay so that's the essentials of doing this entire thing it's not very complicated you can you can customize this until you're blue in the face in fact you can spend an entire day on this and, and I would honestly recommend that spend a day working on your custom interface uh, because you you will 
speed up it can speed up your workflow right uh, it's very crucial to make sure that whenever you're doing something inside of this program that um, you know you're not inhibited by anything and so if you find that you're having to go to a menu all the time maybe it's maybe it's a good idea to create a custom button right and rather than having to go search through a menu to find a specific button go into that palette grab that button throw it onto your UI and save yourself some heartache right um, and so you know do that rather than then going on to a forum and saying oh pixel logic doesn't know how to create a UI blah 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 okay that's <laughs> Look, you're you're an artist. Think outside of the box. That's the purpose of these of these uh, tutorials, guys. Um, I you know I can't I can't stress that enough. You know, people are going to hire you based on your ability to solve problems. And if you can't figure out a basic UI or understand that this is a custom interface, even though PixLogic has gone through great lengths to make sure that there is access for everyone to the Z Classroom that explains these basic things. Good luck finding a job out there, okay? Because nobody wants to hire a whiner, all right? So I hate to get on to you a little bit, but, you know, that's the reality of things. And if I lose a few of you, I lose a few of you. But guess what? I'm going to be honest with you every single time. Um, you know, I'm not going to hide anything. Uh, my goal is to help you to be a better artist and to help you to think a little bit whenever you're here inside of this program. So... I hope that this was helpful to some of you. I hope I didn't uh, rub anybody the wrong way. And if I did, you know, oh well, so well. Um, so thanks for stopping by. Have a great day and happy Z brushing. Take care, guys.